Hello, I'm Ruth Aspie, and I am here virtually with Dr. Grossman. We are both psychologists and founders of the Ziggurat Group. Today, we're starting a series of videos trying to help parents and teachers who are working with individuals on the spectrum. And we're focusing on this time of COVID-19, strategies that could be helpful. The first strategies that we're going to talk about are social narratives. You may have heard of a whole range of social narratives. They include cartooning, comment strip conversations, social stories, power cards, and um, they are very popular and uh, well-supported strategies. They need to be individualized. One thing that you can find collections of social stories and social narratives online, you can find books that are full of them. And one of the things that we're going to talk about today is how to individualize them so that they work best with any given individual. Something that, that uh, might surprise you is that social narratives are helpful from preschool all the way through adulthood. And they're, that what we need to do is make sure that they're developmentally appropriate and then they can be used at any age, any level of development. We also know that social narratives work best when they are paired with other strategies. So later on in this series of videos, we will be talking about other strategies that will work well with social narratives. Now, Dr. Grossman is going to show you a social narrative that we created with the Autism Society. We'll show you a link here. And he is going to talk about how he has individualized it with some of the individuals that he has worked with. Be creative when personalizing your social narrative. One of the things I've done is I've taken the social narrative and I've uh, cut out each of the strips um, to allow for uh, writing and drawing. And this is uh, an example of one after I've cut it out. And let me show you what we've done here. Uh, when I spoke with one child about places that he couldn't go because he, was, he and his family were practicing social distancing, he talked to me about how his family wasn't going to be able to take a trip to Disney World this summer. And so he drew a picture um, here, and that's how he personalized this narrative. Another child, I asked, can you name some individuals that help you feel safe and calm during this time of change? And so what we did was he, he wrote it down on a post-it note. And we just put that down on here, and he said his mom and his dad and, and his cousins Jenna and Katie. So if there's any element in the story that you can individualize, then it's going to make it a, a stronger narrative for the person with whom you're working. And it may be a place, it may be a person, it may be um, an object, it, it, it could be anything that will make it more about that individual's life. And you can do it through, through their drawing, through your drawing, through uh, notes, through post-it notes, anything, anything that you can do to make it more about that individual's life is going to make it a more powerful narrative. One of the key points in the story was illustrating the concept of social distancing being six feet apart. The story utilizes a bed to help uh, it's as a concrete reference for six feet. So the approximately the distance from a headboard to the footboard is six feet. You can extend your child's learning by taking a video of them uh, in their bed or in their bedroom and have them uh, see what that distance looks like. Maybe you could stand at one foot of the bed and the child could stand at the other end of the bed just to help them to get a feel for what six feet apart is. Another strategy would be having a parent and the child or adolescent uh, at either end of the bed and have someone take a photograph of those two people and that could be a photograph that you put onto your page in your social narrative. There are many ways to use a social narrative. We recommend reading the narrative with your child or adolescent and asking questions about key concepts to be sure that they understand. For example, you might ask your child or adolescent, what does it mean to spread germs? Why can't we be around large groups of people? You can also ask your child or adolescent about how they might feel. 
Um, how do you feel about virtual learning or how do you feel about the changes right now? And those are helpful ways to extend the learning. Be sure to refer to concepts from the social narrative in your daily life and reread the story as necessary. Before we leave the topic of social distancing, we wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, building in flexibility for these rules and also communicating uh, the, really your language and your rules with other people. Ruth, um, tell us a little bit about your thoughts on this topic. One thing that might help for the individual on the spectrum to be flexible is to talk to them about the length of time that they may need to be a little bit closer to somebody. And we've learned recently, we've all learned about singing the happy birthday song when we wash our hands. So that might be when we just say, well, if it's the length of a happy birthday song or two happy birthday songs, you're fine. You're doing your best to social distance. Or we might talk about uh, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, whatever it is that, that uh, the individual you're working with understands and is familiar with, so that it gives them some tools for figuring out how, how to be flexible um, while still knowing the importance of social distancing. And be sure to communicate those rules in your language with other people. So, for instance, teachers, um, if you all develop uh, specific rules at school, and I'm sure you will, uh, be sure to communicate those. You could write a social narrative, and that can be an effective way of communicating your rules uh, to parents so that they can begin to use that language and adopt those rules in the home setting, and vice versa. So at home, if uh, the rule is that three Mississippis is okay uh, for uh, if you are less than six feet away, as long as it's for just you know three Mississippis, be sure that you share those rules with teachers so that they will understand why your child's saying three Mississippis. <laughs> we mentioned anxiety a little bit earlier, and we know that change may increase anxiety, and there's certainly a lot of, of new rules and aspects of the COVID-19 situation that could increase the anxiety for people on the spectrum. So we want to encourage them and allow them to ask questions and uh, to be very patient with those questions. One of the things we might add to the social distancing um, strategies for parents and teachers is just to listen to their questions and patiently answer them. Let them know you're on their team and they don't have to figure out social distancing on their own, that they can come to you to help them uh, adapt to whatever new situations they're in. And it's also important to point out that structure helps to reduce anxiety. And so all of these rules, um, the six feet away rule and, you know, just a bed or three Mississippis or whatever it may be, you're creating predictability, you're providing structure, and that can help uh, students and children on the spectrum to be, uh, to be calm and comfortable. A link to the parent guide is provided below. Please join us for our next video for tips on using masks.